Richard Hannon. We're just a week away from the biggest week of the year, I suppose, in flat racing, Royal Ascot. Hopefully you go there with a real strong a group of horses to represent you. Um, let's first of all kick off with, with Sol Anton, of course, who runs in the Coronation Stakes. What did you make of her run at York last time? Not a lot. Um, yeah, she pulled too hard, too free. She, she struggled on, on the ground. Wasn't ideal by any means. And they didn't go very quick. And that turned it all into a disaster. She, Sean said he thought she, she'd held her breath. And he, he said, I'm surprised I managed to finish third. It doesn't dampen my enthusiasm for her one bit. She's back home, she's settled. We've taken her to Newbury, to the back straight. They very kindly led us. And she hardly picked up the bridle. They will go much quicker in a coronation. And I think she, she will acquit herself a, a lot better. I, I, you know, I think she's a very special filly and I hope she shows it. You sort of led me on to my next question there because as, as we saw at York, she was quite keen and she was much more to the front when she won at, at Newbury beforehand. So if you had to go off and make it out in front, would you do that? I think that all depends on the draw. Even at Newbury, she was on a knife edge. You know, he looked like he was just hanging on to it. Um, she could do that, but she's a Frankel and a lot of them are like this. You know, they're just a little bit in a rush to get on with it and, and keen. Hopefully she'll grow out of it and they'll go quick and ask her and she'll look just like her mummy did. And do you feel as time goes on that she's maturing mentally as well as physically? Yes, I think she is. She, you know, she's only had three runs and the second run she probably didn't learn a lot. Last time when she came off the bridle, she struggled, but it actually wouldn't have done her any harm. You know, if she wants to be Queen Bee, she has to start winning good races and if she doesn't do things properly, she won't. She has the ability to, without a shadow of a doubt. And what is it that you see in, in her? I know obviously she's got the breeding, but you must have to see something in them which, which suggests that they are real top notches. Yeah, a simple answer. You know, you saw her at Newbury. She was, I had a lot of phone calls, breathtaking. She looked like a serious, serious filly. We've got to get her back to that. And she beat decent horses by a long way. So I think everybody saw enough that day, but I've seen her homework. <clears throat> And it's, it's, it's it, not normal. Yeah, it's not run of the mill sort of, that's a nice filly. She really does look like she could be anything. Let's talk about Chindit, um, who was obviously a very good uh, juvenile. He, he won the Greenham at Newbury and, and, and didn't run that badly in, in, the, in the 2000s. Oh, did he he? What did you well. think of that? I run? thought he ran well. You know, he might even think he won the race because, you know, the race was sort of over the other side of the track, away from him a bit. And to his credit, he ran on. We we're going to take the noseband off. Dobbsy reported that he felt he doesn't really face it. Um, so we've taken that off. He rode him this morning and he was, he was very happy. <clears throat> I think in that race too, it's a round mile. And, you know, we'll ride him a little handier. I think we've got to. And of course, you won the St. James's Palace with, with Barney Roy. Is this horse very similar to them in the way that you, you would train him at home in the mornings? Yeah, he is. Um, Barney Roy wasn't, <clears throat> wasn't the fastest horse. You know, and he was the first one off the bridle in the St. James Palace when he did win. Um, but he kept going and ground them down, going to the line. And I envisage if this fellow wins, he'll probably, it will probably happen in a similar way, if it happens. Um, but we're very happy with him at home. He deserves a big one. You know, he's, he's, he's a very good horse. And this is hopefully a chance to show it. I think he did show it in the Guineas, but we probably thought they were gonna come back to us and they didn't. And we'll try not to, to make that happen again. And I suppose another good thing about him is, often when you get good two-year-olds, you always just have that question mark is, have they trained on? Well, he has, hasn't he? So yeah, yeah. that's one good tick in, in the box. I think you definitely say that. He won his group three, and you know he finished fifth in the Guineas, running on, and ran a very good race. So I, yeah, I think he's over that, has he, hasn't he trained on? And now, now's his time, hopefully, the next six weeks or so. Pete Le Bon is very pleased with his handicap run. I see the handicap has put him up two pounds. Uh, he will probably go to the Hunt Cup. He, it's always going to be a time when he was going to come good and start running well again. And hopefully this is it. He's a very quirky horse. Things have to go right. If they do, he's capable of beating anything. Um, but they have to go right. And uh, that's very difficult when there'll probably be two, maybe three groups of them coming up the straight at Ascot. You've got to hope you're in the right place. So, you know, he's a big price. And so he should be, but he's, in my opinion, a short price to run a, to run a good race. Motta KL is also in that race. We've, we've saved him for this. 
um, since his last run. He, he loves Ascot. He won there last year and he could run a big race. A very talented horse, but he has to give lumps of weight away, which is difficult, especially against good horses. And another horse you've always thought a great deal of is Uzo. We saw him walk, we're working over at Everly this morning. What's, what's the plan with him? He's in great form. He too has a bit of a, a, um, a mind on him, um, but he's a very good horse on his day. He went to Newbury and I thought worked, worked, worked very, very well. Last time he didn't, you know, he didn't run his race for some reason. Um, we scoped him, he was okay, but he never looked like running a race. He sat last and, you know, finished out the back. But that, that was just, you know, one of those days, I'm hoping. But he's a very talented horse and hopefully we'll have a good chance at Ascot. And in the same colours, you've got Dingle. Dingle, yeah, we'll probably go to the Britannia. Um, he didn't handle the soft ground last time at Sandown on the, you know, the day before what used to be the Whitbread. And that caught him out, so, and he looked legless the last furlong. Um, the ground will be quicker here and he'll run a much better race. The same owner also owns um, Sowles, who won at Nottingham in a very good time. She's going to go for the Albany, very nice filly, and she would have needed that, so she will improve for that, but she will need to have done. I was going to say, did, did, she, did she surprise you? Because no. she, she looked sort of well beaten, but she, she, she finished the race really well, didn't she? Yeah, we always liked her a lot. And then she just went through a quiet spell where she, she, was, you know, she wasn't saying, wow, I want to run. And then about two weeks before we did run her, she started showing signs of coming back and she could be a very nice filly. Aristia, very happy with her. You know, she's only run this year. She's very inexperienced. The plan was always to go to the Ribblesdale because we didn't put her in the Oaks. We, you know, we didn't think she was going to be of that calibre or, you know, they're not normally. So she's always had the Ribblesdale in mind. She's a lightly raced filly but she's learned a lot in her last couple of races and uh, we're hopeful that she's, she's going to run well. She's, she's quite quirky. She's a very tall, leggy, elegant filly who will have improved since Newbury. Armour worked very well this morning, you see on the um, video. He's a very fast horse. Ryan loved him. Came back and he's been fine since then. We were going to run him in the uh, Lily Agnes and then we, he was re-shod and he was a little bit sore, so he didn't go there. He would probably go Windsor Castle or Norfolk, but he worked very well this morning. Good little two-year-old, I think. OK, and another good two-year-old who was very, very impressive at Newbury on his second start um, was, was Gisburn. What's the plan with him? Gisburn um, is going to go to the Coventry, and that really has been the plan since he went past the line at Newbury. He's quite a, <clears throat> quite a flashy-looking horse, but he could be a very good horse. His rib chesters look like they're quite useful and uh, he'll run a big race. And you've obviously got quite a good record in the Coventry, the likes of Camford Cliffs and, and Threat just went down narrowly as well. Is, yes. Does this all sort of fit into to that he sort does, of He does, but it's always, a, it's a race where you find out exactly where you are. You can hope you, you've got a good horse, but this will tell us. I hope we do. He certainly looked like one, but the Coventry will tell us. Gobas, he won very well at Leicester. He's, all, he's been a very straightforward two-year-old. We're thinking Coventry or Norfolk. He too had a nice break since that run and he worked very well this morning. He's a very professional horse that just does his job. And when they have an attitude like that, they're normally pretty good. What is it, when, when you look and you said you, you might go for the Norfolk with one or the Coventry with the others, when, when do you decide on what do you have to see in them to decide which race you may go for? Sean thinks six furlongs might be better but they go very fast at Royal Ascot and it's a very stiff five and quite often the race falls apart in terms of late on and if you're struggling early, it, invariably they finish very well. The Coventry is always a, the best race by a mile for two-year-olds and you sort of go there and you want to win. Um, so we're not sure what, where we're going to go yet but he's done everything he needs to do here. It's just a question of looking at the races and you know he'll do one more bit on Saturday or Sunday morning just a pipe opener but he's in good nick and worked very well. And I suppose to win these races at Ascot you need a horse that's got a bit of experience and is quite hardy and Rob John I suppose could fit into that category. He is a hardy horse, brave and he's a very big horse and he's grown um, which normally means that they will have improved. He's, he knows plenty and he's got a lot of ability and if there's any chinks in the armour of horses at, at Royal Ascot he could be one to find them.
and you've got Secret Strength who took a couple of attempts or three times to get his head in front. I can't, believe, I can't believe it took us two goes or three goes to win with him. I thought he'd definitely win first time. A little bit, a little bit of trepidation the second time. And he ran pretty moderately there. But from what we've seen at home, he's an extremely good two-year-old. I'm just delighted he showed it there in a good race the other day. We had to go to Scotland to, to do it. But I think he gets a bonus. If he wins at Royal Ascot, he gets a quarter of a million or something. So that'd be nice. And Lucelle, another decent two-year-old? Lucelle, I don't think we'll go to Ascot. We'll look something, probably seven furlongs for him. He'll probably go, you know, look at something like the superlative at the July meeting. Posted, uh, she's going to go for the, for the mile group two on the straight course. If she settles, she's a very good filly, but she can be a little bit keen. She's been good lately. We didn't go to Epsom and run on the soft ground, just we thought we'd save her for Royal Ascot. Um, it's a very good race for her. She's in good nick. She's already won a listed race and hopefully she'd have a very good chance. And happy romance. You've happy got romance. the Commonwealth Cup. Yeah, she's going to go to the Commonwealth Cup. She ran a decent race at Newbury. I thought she'd go on soft ground and I thought she'd get seven. Even though she won a super sprint and a group three on soft ground, I don't think she handled it when she went to Newbury the other day for the, um, for the listed race. She, she's going to go for that, for that group one. It's going to be difficult. She'll be probably a massive price, but she could run very well. She has a habit, of, she looks great. She has a habit of, of putting in an, a, a run and you don't really know where it's come from. But I'm not saying she'll win, but I'm hopeful she'll run well. She's got it all to do. But you must have been sort of delighted that she's, she's retained that ability when oh, yeah. you saw her win at Chalms for that second run of the yeah, year. Yeah, that, that, <clears throat> that sort of made her for the year. She's won a Group 3 illicit race, very valuable filly. And she's grown. She was never just going to be a two-year-old. Um, she might get seven in time, but she certainly doesn't get it now. And they'll go very quick at Royal Ascot. She'll be able to deal with that. Hopefully we'll get a nice toe off a fast one and be there or thereabouts, it'd be nice. River Alwyn is going to go for the mile and a half handicap. He's improved a lot this year. He was always going to be a nice horse developing for this year. I hope he copes with the much faster ground than he's encountered so far this year. He won a nice race at, New, at um, Newmarket, sorry, and then ran very well again back at Newbury. Um, and we've saved him. The owners are very keen to go to Royal Ascot, so that's where we're heading. And he just worked with Chindit. He's never going to be as fast as Chindit, but it does a job in terms of getting them fit and, and letting them know that race day is coming. So hopefully he'll run a, a good race.